Stone walls like these ones are really hard to make in Substance Designer. Because of that, people tend to go for sea rush and generate the stones in there because they look better and with a better 3D shape, and then take them to Substance Designer. But I cracked a way to make your stones feel realistic by generating 3D shapes in 2D images with Substance Designer. Now let's dive into my step-by-step -step process of how to generate the stone wall and make it believable inside Substance Designer. One of the main reasons people also use sea brush to make their stone walls is because it's easier for them them to actually create a pattern that feels organic. Inside Substance Designer that is really hard because sometimes you do get an organic pattern but with that pattern it's really hard to generate realistic rocks. But I actually found a way of generating procedural patterns. So let me show you. So first off, before we understand what's right to do, we need to understand what's wrong. People, when they try to do stone walls, what they usually do is they get a tile generator and create what we call a cells pattern. Basically they do several shapes like this or circles. Yes. And they go on adding random values in position, shape, everything, rotation. Yes. And then do luminous random. In here they change this to max. And from here, they create a distance node. And with this, if you crank this up, they have a cell spatter. They use this with an edge detect, and now they have their stones. And they use these as stone walls. And this is horrible done. Yes, guys, stone walls are made by humans. We do the stone walls. We created the stone walls. We built the stones from nature. We took the stone from nature, my bad there. We took the stone from nature, nature and shaped them into what we need to make the walls. So how rocks are positioned is not that organic but has something handmade but what breaks the positioning of the stones is using different shapes in the bricks that generate this wall if you take a look to this stone wall i made the one that we are looking at today you can see that i have kind of like rectangular stones but then i have some more organic shapes here small ones yes bigger ones i have a lot of different shapes and that gives the pattern and the wall a little more of organic feel of natural feel yeah, like someone actually did really build this and this is not just a procedural wall. So how do we fix this? We fix this by using a tile random node. Yes, this is actually quite similar to the tile generator, but the only issue that the tile random helps you or has some features that allows you to generate random shapes. So if I create this one here, you're gonna see that it's actually quite weird. So let's try, try to match and see what happens. Here we have a value of 10 by 17 on the tile. I'm gonna pull this up to 10 by 17 and still i'm not gonna have the same result and that's because the tile random has a feature called the threshold and the threshold my friends allow us to generate more cuts and it's what i'm using to generate these small stones you see here now how do we get from this to the result we have here so one of the first things you need to do is you want to increase the scale to 1.1 there we go it's gonna generate everything wipe and don't worry because now i'm gonna add color random Yes, to at least 0.5 and then set the blending mode to max this is going to create what you see here and by using an edge detect we now have our stones you need to be really careful with this because as you can see here there's two rocks that are connected and that's because of the color random so you can always try pushing this a little bit more or if not try to do random seeds and see that the mistake is not that visible as for example here right now this looks great in fact I may even change it with the one that we are going to be using. Now in this one, I'm using no threshold at all. Yes, but I'm using other things. So let me just use this here and see if it generates something better. For a moment, it looks better. It looks more organic, so I'm going to keep it. Now, as you can see, my pattern is not the one I was showing you at the beginning. And the reason for that is because I'm doing something we did with Rick Royals in the past. We're actually doing a combined pattern, meaning we are getting two patterns one that is bigger, one that is smaller, yes, and we're pulling them together by using a mask. And from there, we generate a new result. So the first pattern is gonna be tile random, but the second pattern is gonna be a tile random with discs. The reason for this is because I wanted to generate more organic looking rocks, allowing me to give my material the feeling that the person was creating the stone walls, but he calculated but the distance of the height and started to fill gaps with other stones. As you can see here, you have some small stones here. Yes, and then you have all this lined. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can do. Although some of them feels a little bit weird, but don't worry. We can always fix those later. This is actually quite useful because we're using the main pattern as the source of my our mask. So we don't have to generate any kind of flat fill node to get a flat fill to random grayscale or anything like that. We just go directly for what we need with a histone scan and replace them using a copy mode. So we go from this result 
to this one. Yes, now is the part where we're gonna do the stone shapes. Now we're gonna get into creating the 3D shapes for our rocks because we have the pattern but not the shapes. And I want to show you something that I would like you to avoid doing from now onwards because I see a lot of my mentees during the mentorship program in FMA do this a lot without reason at all. So what people do is after the pattern, they go directly for a flat fill, they come down here, they create a flat fill to gradient, set this to random seed one, sorry, set angle variation to one, and make four variations of this. And now start generating random results by changing the seed. And this is the part that I'm a little bit mad about, is that they all start blending these tones together with a mean, just like this, because they saw it in a tutorial from someone who has experience or more experience than them, and they just copy what they do. They don't take the chance to make something more original and try something out. So for you, I made the effort of taking this kind of workflow and transforming it to something new. And if you've seen some of our past videos, I'm sure you've seen it before. So what we are going to need for this new technique, yes, is actually start by deforming a little bit of the shapes. Yes, I want to deform a little bit of the shapes to generate some randomness. And yes, it's actually quite strong and I don't really care about it. That's what I wanted. But because then I would use a cells one pattern with uh, minus one in width and subtract it on top of it. I'm gonna explain what's going on here, so wait for it. All nodes in Substance Designer have a resolution, as you can see in this node. In here it says 1496 by 1486. Now I can change the resolution by coming to the output size, yes, and this will generate a different image. Now we do this to get uh, specific results by using really low values on our memory conception. Now by doing this, I am subtracting this to my stones and generating new shapes. I'm using the subtract method, and as you can see, I'm generating some bigger parts in there and maybe in other places as well. Now, as you can see, I'm using a specific tiling that is seven. You can try using other kinds of tilings, but the tiling I found out that worked the best was seven. Again, feel free to use other kind of values. It's always gonna go out and result in, in a rock, but depends a lot on what kind of rocks you are doing. For the ones I was aiming, seven was the golden number. So here's the other part that we were talking about before. I grabbed a flat fill and generated four flat fill to gradient, but instead of combining them all together, I used them with a the mean value to sculpt the different rocks in different shapes. As you can see, I'm breaking the tiling or connection between these rocks. And this is what I was talking about before, about using things that maybe you saw from others, but making them yours. I know there's not really much difference, but the main difference is how I'm applying this. Yeah, maybe the process overall is the same, but I can assure you that if you remove this part here, yes, the whole process won't work. And it's gonna look super flat, see? So you need to learn to get things yes, from process that professionals like me share and try to make them more unique because that's what we do as professionals. When we don't know an answer, we don't just generate it out of our head. We need inspiration and this is the inspiration we get. We get tutorials to get a head start and from there we start exploring. And, what, and with that exploration, we get to the results that you see in our portfolios or games that you love. Now, let's not rush it because this is not the end. There's actually another secret to make this look 3D and it comes in the next step. We're gonna use the famous technique of one of our community members that is the non-uniform directional warp. We're gonna get the non-uniform directional warp and get the trail length to one with the trail mode in max and get the uniform color to white and connect it to the intensity map and warp angle map. Yes, I know. Nowadays, you don't need the uniform color white, but I do need it. I need it because I'm using Substance Designer version 2023, which needs that in order to make it work. In the latest version, you're not gonna need the white color to make this happen. You can just plug the stones into the input and make it work just like that. Now, as you can see, this is what is actually helping us generate the 3D shapes. We go from this to this, generating this height of the shape, and then to the other one to generate the other step. You can keep doing this, yes, in different directions. I think I wouldn't recommend it that much right now. Yes, it might add a little bit extra of detail, but it will remove the space between the rocks, see, right here. I think you could use maybe a levels to auto level this information and then bring a little bit of this back and generate some spacing between the stones. But still, I do think that it's, yeah, look at this. It's maybe better to keep it in two non-uniform directional warps 
and from there you keep on working on your stones. As you see, I'm also using the levels then, because this is helping me to increase my values and generate better shapes. Now we're gonna start with step three, and that's gonna be surface variation for our stones, but despite its surface variation, I still consider it sculpting our stones. Stones don't only have surface variation or surface details, they have a lot of shapes that are kind of like on top of them. So we're gonna go over some of these details. The first one is the go big and go small. The go big and go small is generate a detail that you like and do it first in big scale and then in smaller scale to just generate more variation. So right now I want to add a detail that felt like sculpt. So I use a creased node with the levels, and then I use a slow blur to inflate this shape, as you can see. Then using a non-uniform direction warp with a cloud stew that was blurred, I basically add a lot of variation and organic feeling to it. Now this distortion, it's just kind of big to make. We are not looking for something more specific. We are looking for something a little bit more random while keeping this technique. Then we use a Gaussian noise to mask this up using a multiply and a transformation 2D to just turn it around. You can also add a directional warp which will help you to basically use information of your height map to make these lines move with the shape of your stones. Now we're gonna apply this with basically a subtract with a value 0.51, but using a Gaussian noise as a mask with a scale of nine. Super important to use masks for all of this process so we can generate variation. Yes, we want to tell our material, okay, add this detail here, but not here because the detail is specific and pretty important because it's not everywhere, it's unique. And that's another thing that many students don't understand and they start to add all details everywhere and now the detail is just noise covering all of your material. Don't do that, use masks, be smart, and try to make things look better by actually controlling the things that you add to this. Now, the small part of this is basically the same, but with less steps. We are basically doing the same with a change in the value. We're using a scale of six, meaning the tiling is bigger, but the shapes that we see here are uh, smaller. So it makes this better for us to apply. Now, something that you might want to do is if you are using the same mask, try to play a little bit with, in, with the intensity because this kind of cuts are generating these lines you see here. Some kind of those lines that you usually see in other places that generate, yes, see, this kind of layering that rocks have on top. Now, not all rocks have them. That's why we are also using a mask to kind of have a really nice control over it. Now, next step is similar to what we did way back here, but we're gonna change a little bit something. We're gonna get a cells one pattern and invert it. And we're in a non-uniform directional word that is connected to our um, well, hide information. We're gonna generate all of these organic lines that we're gonna combine together with a mean darken, allowing us to generate more variation in the height and generate this kind of peaks that we see in our materials. And of course, this is gonna need help of a levels. By this moment, most probably what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have created a little more space between the rocks and that's great and nice because we need that. Still, this felt a little bit too uniform, so I used a warp to generate a more variation using a clouds to a blur. This is super useful for many things, to be honest. Now, your rocks here don't have much space, and that's all right. The reason this happens is because we actually use these warps here and close up the gaps between each other, but there's a way we can solve this. If you use a shallows node, you're gonna get the space between all rocks. You can see that if you set the distance to one, and then change a little bit the light angle, you're gonna get different things, yeah? So I'm gonna make a copy here and try to move around the light angle, which for the moment is not changing much, but if I increase this intensity, it's gonna change a lot. The reason we're using this is because we're gonna invert it and then subtract it to our rocks. This will change a lot how our rocks look, of course. They're gonna make them smaller and allow more space for the mortar to come through it, as you can see. Now, in my case, I didn't want this to happen, and that's why I disconnected it and it's not in the graph, but if you need to do this, then you can go ahead and try to do it as well. Now, the next details are a little bit repetitive compared to the last ones, but there's some slight changes that I want to show you. So in here, the cells one is again inverted, again with a directional warp, but this time we applied a slow blur. We applied a slow blur because we wanted to generate this kind of cracking effect on top and to be applied into our rocks. As you can see here, we actually use this with our stones and warp it and then combine it with a mean, destroying some of the edges of our stones that if I increase this now, they might be or get more visible in certain areas, showcasing 
kind of these lines and distractions that you see as well. Now, this is a technique that we're going to use later on, but this here might be one of the first things that I add for this material. And right now, it's not really that much into it because it's too strong. So by using a crystal one and a directional warp, I managed to get the right shape. And with a close two and a multi-directional warp, I distort the image once again. Now, what we are doing with this image is basically using an add sub. This allows us to add information in certain places and subtract in others. Now, the best thing is that if we pull this to be higher, you're gonna see that we're gonna generate some really nice and interesting stone shapes, see? Which feel way more organic than I was thinking, for to be honest. Let's see if I can bring this up a little bit. Not that much. Maybe we have to change something else here. But you can see how it deforms and generates more variation in our stones. Of course, right now I'm using a way too kind of strong value, but it can be useful in other cases and scenarios when you are generating stones for yourself. Now, by this part, you should be able to generate your own stone pattern and being capable of making it more original and trying and testing things out, it's gonna even look better. But I have one question for you. A stone wall is as good as the mortar that fixes and sticks all stones together. How would you generate a, a mortar like the ones you're seeing right on screen where the edges go up while the interior goes in? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in our next chapter.